I'm Paul Barnes, and I'm uh, here as a guest director at Nevada Conservatory Theater, University of Nevada, Las Vegas, uh, directing Romeo and Juliet, uh, which is a huge project, as it turns out, uh, involving a very large cast that is primarily uh, composed of MFA acting students and a lot of acting students from the BA program and which is being designed by a wonderful team of MFA design students here at the university. Uh, this was the third production I've uh, worked on at uh, UNLV as a guest director. I did a production of Love Slavers Lost in the uh, studio theater several years ago, and I, did, uh, I directed The Importance of Being Earnest um, a few years ago here in this space. Uh, it's wonderful to be back. I always enjoy my time in Las Vegas. Uh, Vegas itself is always an entertaining city in which to spend time in, uh, but uh, the program here is really uh, wonderful to be a part of. Uh, the students are terrific. They're very hardworking. They're talented, and so far we all seem to be having a good time. Uh, Romeo and Juliet is a popular play. It comes up a lot uh, uh, in both university settings as well as professional settings. I've directed the play uh, a few times before and always enjoy getting back to it because I think it's such a wonderful story. I think that uh, one of the features about Romeo and Juliet that people often overlook or forget uh, is the fact that so much of it is actually funny. Uh, the first half of the play is pretty comedic uh, with some really brilliant and brilliantly memorable characters uh, that are unique to Shakespeare. Uh, the nurse, which is his creation, as well as Mercutio, who is Romeo's, one of Romeo's good friends. And they're pretty memorable people, and they are responsible for a lot of the body humor in the script. Uh, so I think in many ways, uh, the play is almost symmetrical with a kind of comic buildup to the rather tragic events that take place at the middle of the play, and then a far more serious second half of the play, uh, which uh, you know winds down to the familiar end that most people associate with Romeo and Juliet. Uh, but what I, they often don't associate with Romeo and Juliet is the wit and the humor and the body humor. Uh, there's some great, great dirty jokes in the play, uh, which I think uh, <laughs> will be uh, fun and, and entertaining for people, and uh, particularly those who uh, may be a little bit Shakespeare shy and feel they won't get it. Um, we are setting this production in the Regency period, which is roughly 1810, kind of Jane Austen, Pride and Prejudice look, because we think it's romantic, we think it's poetic, we think uh, you know the guys look great, the women look great, um, and uh, also for more practical reasons, it's certainly within the means of the theater department here. Uh, that's one of the things you need to take into consideration with any production you're directing, but especially something on this scale. Uh, the Italian Renaissance seems like a natural setting for Romeo and Juliet, uh, but it's also a very expensive and rather time-consuming time period to consider. Um, so you don't want to stretch your resources beyond what they're capable of, and the Regency just seemed like uh, a great place uh, to land the play. I have directed contemporary productions of the play, uh, and I think uh, the one in particular that I directed uh, in the Midwest at the Great River Shakespeare Festival was uh, uh, successful, but you have to be very, very careful because I think once you get past the life of Alexander Graham Bell and uh, the invention of the telephone, it begins to raise a lot of questions about you know communication and you know why can't they get in touch with each other if everybody's got you know a telephone. So um, uh, I prefer going with a more traditional period look for the play, especially if we can land the play in a romantic, summery, sexy, poetic time period, which I think the Regency is. People often ask, uh, why Shakespeare? Why Romeo and Juliet? Uh, you know, the plays are 450 years old or older. The language is archaic, uh, sometimes difficult to understand uh, because uh, uh, our use of the English language has diminished in need as well as execution over a long period of time because we have so many other things that take the place of language in our lives. But when you get right back down to it, uh, Shakespeare wrote in English, our own native tongue. So it's not like you're going to hear a play in a completely foreign language, although sometimes Shakespeare can sound like a foreign language. I think you know it's incumbent upon the director and the actors and the text coaches to work really hard you know, to make the plays as understandable as possible by being clear and specific in how the language is spoken 
so that the actors truly have a specific idea of what it is they're saying and what it is they mean. And regardless of whether an audience member may understand uh, a precise word, they'll certainly come away with uh, a pretty clear sense of what's going on. Uh, but even beyond that, they're great stories. And this is a story that is as fresh today as it was when it was written. I mean, if you look uh, you know, at, at life uh, today and, and the you know, kinds of conflicts around the world, whether we're talking about uh, you know, opposing factions in the Middle East or we're talking about gang warfare in urban centers uh, around this country, there are stories all the time about long-standing feuds that people don't even know how, uh, what the beginning roots of those feuds were. And often, innocent people are struck down in the middle of these long-standing, inexplicable feuds. So somehow, Shakespeare, as he so often is, is plugged into you know, understanding something about the human journey and about human nature and, and what it is to be human that applied certainly when he wrote the plays, but seems to apply today as much now, if not even more so. So I think it's you know, important to get back to his, his words and to his plays and to his stories. As I say, you know, they're great stories, but even more than that, the language is beautiful. And uh, to be able to sort of be ravished by or ravaged by that language you know, for a couple of hours uh, in a theater and for several weeks working up to opening a play is, is a really nice way to spend your time.